as an AC source work with an inductor just by itself, then we'll do a capacitor by itself, then we'll do a capacitor and a resistor, inductor resistor, and then we'll put them all together. Okay? So uh, we, remember we were saying voltage of the source is voltage of the inductor. They're equal because that's the only thing in this uh, circuit. And it's, uh, since by definition we have the voltage of the inductor is the L di dt, that's equal to this. In this case, we, we had the voltage set to 6 volts, and the frequency was 60 hertz. So from here, we can actually calculate the current in the circuit as a function of time. Now, for a minute, let me just do the general equation. So uh, let me just write it like, uh, like this. This one is the root mean square voltage given off by the, power, uh, by the source, root 2. And then this one is sine of 2 pi ft. So I'll write it as the general equation. And now, from here, L goes to the bottom. And then I can integrate both of these to get the current in the circuit. So uh, the current in the circuit is going to be V root mean square root 2 over L. And then the integral of sine of 2 pi ft is uh, negative cosine. Negative cosine of 2 pi ft. And then the 2 pi f comes to the bottom. And not the t. Uh, the 2 pi f comes to the bottom on the denominator. So the current in the circuit, if you just have an, just an inductor, is a negative cosine function, whereas the voltage of the source is a sine function. And then this thing the amp is the total amplitude of the current. So we can rewrite this as uh, negative voltage root mean square over, rewrite this as 2 pi F L. And then the root 2, write it separately. And then write cosine of 2 pi F T. And then there's that negative because of the integral of the sine. Um, so whatever this thing is, it must have units of current. And it must ha be the same equivalent uh, it, it must play the same equivalent role as voltage of the ro uh, root mean square. So therefore, it's the current root mean square, right? So this, is, so this is negative root mean square current, root 2, cosine of 2 pi ft. So root, current root mean square root 2, that's the maximum current. But remember, the ammeter measures the root mean square current, and the voltmeter measures the root mean square voltage. So we predict the, root, the current, the ammeter in the circuit will read whatever this is, the root mean square current. So let's may I talk a little bit about what's this thing in the denominator. What is that thing in the denominator? 2 pi FL. It must have units of what? Well, it's got to have units of voltage over something is equal to current, right? So this thing must have units of resistance, OK? So it's got to have units of ohms. Therefore, whatever it is, it's describing how much the inductor resists the current flow, OK? And the name that we give it is XL. That's the symbol we give it. XL is equal to 2 pi FL. And then 2 pi F is omega, omega L. And this is known as the inductive reactance, OK? And the inductive reactance tells us how much the inductor resists the flow of current in an AC circuit, OK? So let's see here if the formula makes sense. It's telling us the bigger the inductor and the more frequency, the higher you're trying to change the current, the more the inductor resists you, OK? So let's see if that makes sense. Let's come back to the picture here. 
So remember, the frequency is tells you how much, how often this source tries to change the current. Uh, it tries to change the current from clockwise to counterclockwise to clockwise to counterclockwise to clockwise to counterclockwise. So it goes back and forth, back and forth. So it's, uh, the inductor doesn't like it when you try to change the current too fast. Because as we saw in the previous chapter, when, when you have a rate of change of current is high through the inductor, it creates a back EMF, okay? Because when the rate of change of current is high, the magnetic field that you're creating in the inductor, remember this all began two chapters ago in chapter 31. A lot of people forget the beginning of this. Chapter 31, we said Faraday's law when uh, you try to change the magnetic field, you create a uh, back EMF in the uh, coil. And when you, try to, uh, when you try to change that magnetic field more quicker, the, magnetic, uh, the EMF is uh, larger. So it makes sense that the uh, inductive reactance is bigger when the frequency is higher. When you try to change it more quicker, it resists you more. So whatever XL is, it's the inductive reactance, and it has units of ohms. Okay? Now, another thing let's talk about. Let's talk about the phase difference between the current and the source voltage. The current is a negative cosine function, so let's go to, over to that board. The source voltage is a sine function. So the source voltage here is a sine function. And the uh, current is a negative cosine function. So the current will look something like negative cosine begins with its, uh, with its uh, minimum value, right, when t equals to 0. And then negative cosine then equals when the sine is maximum, the cosine is 0. And when the uh, sine is 0, the negative cosine reaches its max. So the current looks like this. So here's the current. OK, so we say that the current is actually uh, behind the source voltage for an inductor. In other words, for if you just have an inductor, the current in the circuit lags behind the source voltage. Why lags behind? You see here the difference? The current reaches its maximum later than the source voltage does. Or you could say it this way. The source voltage in an inductor, the source voltage of the, uh, the source voltage, remember the source voltage and the inductor voltage are the same. So the source voltage is the same as the voltage across the inductor. So here's another way to say it. The voltage of the inductor is ahead of the current by how many uh, radians or how many degrees? Well, one is a negative cosine. So let's write this. The voltage of the inductor is equal to 6.57. Actually, let's just write it as a variable right now. Uh, v root means square root 2 sine of uh, 2 pi ft. And the current is equal to negative uh, I root means square, root 2, cosine of 2 pi ft. What I could do is I could rewrite this as uh, without the negative, right? I can rewrite it as sine of 2 pi ft minus pi over 2. so that we can compare the two. Let's see if this makes sense. If I put t equals to 0 here, I get sine of negative pi over 2, which is uh, negative 1. And if I put 0 here, cosine of 0 is uh, 1. And then you got a negative, negative 1. So it works out. Okay. So the current is behind, lags behind the voltage of an inductor by pi over 2. Or you could write it this way. 